Hello, I'm Father Tim Nelson, pastor of St. Mary, Star of the Sea, Catholic Church in Jackson, Michigan, and as we approach the great solemnity of Pentecost, I'd like to invite you to join me in meditating upon the fruit of the Holy Spirit as we call down the great paraclete upon our lives, our families, and our parishes across the Diocese of Lansing. In the 10th chapter of Mark's Gospel, a rich man comes up to Jesus and asks, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responds by saying, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Then Jesus, looking at him, loves him and says, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. In commenting on this passage, Dr. Mary Healy, a scripture professor at Sacred Heart Major Seminary in Detroit says, the question this man asks is the question we all ultimately ask, what is the meaning of life? What is my ultimate destiny and how do I reach it? The question is really, how do I enter the kingdom of God? The very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, tells us that God made us very good and that he made us in his image and likeness. So from the beginning, we were made to be good. We were made God-like, and that is our ultimate destiny. Now most of us, I imagine, regard ourselves as good people, and we know that we can't get to heaven without being good. But just like the man in the gospel story, there is usually one thing that holds us back from being perfect, from being truly good, from being God-like. For the man in the Mark's Gospel, it was the safety and security he found in possessions. They kept him from seeing the love that Jesus had for him, from seeing that what he was lacking was standing right there in front of him, looking at him with love. It was Jesus that he needed all along, and it is Jesus that we all need in order to be truly fulfilled, to be good and to be God-like. St. Augustine put it in this way, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. The sacred heart of Jesus beats with love for us all, especially for sinners, who have a longing in their hearts for what is good, that is, for what will make them happy. But they seek to fulfill it in all the wrong places. To find the rest, peace, and fulfillment our heart truly desires, we need to let go of the possessions we think will secure our happiness and look into the loving eyes of Jesus, seeing that you can leave all the sin behind and follow him. Although the gospel does not tell us what happened to the rich man, I would like to think that somewhere along the line he met Jesus' mother, Mary. Maybe in Mary's loving eyes, he could see that she who had nothing of wealth or possessions really had everything. She had Jesus, her son, Mary's immaculate heart beats in union with the sacred heart of Jesus. Now when you have Jesus, when he is the most important possession of your life, Jesus also possesses you, and you become God-like. That is, you become good. The actions of a truly good person are naturally good, but they spring from no other motive than the love of Jesus' sacred heart burning in your heart. When Mary is gathered with the disciples in the upper room awaiting the arrival of the Holy Spirit, she is praying with them to Jesus, her son, asking for his Holy Spirit to come. They burn, the burning love they had in their hearts was met with the love and power of the Holy Spirit in the form of tongues of fire resting over them. On the day of Pentecost, fire met fire, love met love, and that fire of love went out into the world doing good. So if you ask yourself, am I a good person? The answer lies in the love you have for Jesus. Is it a love that is willing to forsake all else? If not, look to Mary, ask for her maternal intercession for the same kind of love she had for Jesus. Make this request each with each Hail Mary as you pray the rosary. Be patient and persevering, it will happen. Jesus won't deny a request like that. And when it happens, you will experience the presence of Jesus in your heart. It will be like a new birth, an epiphany. God's goodness in you will bring a joy 
that with which nothing else can compare. After all, in the end, it's not Santa Claus who is coming, it's Jesus. So be good, for goodness sake. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen.